Information assurance and cybersecurity play integral roles in the risk management process. The extent of cybersecurity measures needed is contingent on the level of risk the entity is willing to tolerate, essentially, the potential consequences of environmental factors. After evaluating this risk, security controls are implemented to mitigate it to an acceptable level. Risks may stem from cyber attacks like malware, social engineering, or denial of service attacks, as well as from other environmental factors such as fire, violent crime, or natural disasters. Through adept risk management technologies, vulnerabilities and threats can be identified, and the likelihood and potential impact of each threat can be calculated. What do we mean by threats and vulnerabilities? Well, a vulnerability is like a hole or a weakness in how an organization protects its important stuff, like information. And a threat is something or someone that wants to use that weakness to get in without permission. When a threat takes advantage of a vulnerability, it can cause harm to something valuable. For example, a big storm can be a threat to the electricity supply, which is vulnerable to flooding. The place where we do our computer work is something valuable. Security experts leverage their expertise to analyze operational risk management, ascertain optimal methods for utilizing risk data, collaborate across functions, and communicate actionable insights and findings to relevant stakeholders. Common cybersecurity terms like threats, vulnerabilities, and assets are well known to the majority of professionals in the field. Something valuable that needs to be kept safe is called an asset. A vulnerability is like a hole or weakness in the efforts to keep that valuable thing safe. A threat is anything or anyone trying to take advantage of that weakness to get past the efforts to keep the valuable thing safe. A threat. A threat is a person or thing that takes action to exploit, or make use of, a target organization system vulnerabilities, as part of achieving or furthering its goal or objectives. To better understand threats, consider the following scenario. Imagine you have a smartphone, the asset, and you use a password to protect it, the protection. Now, let's talk about a real-life scenario involving a threat, a threat actor, and a threat vector. Threat. Picture a sneaky software, malware that's out there to steal personal information from your smartphone. Threat actor. Behind the scenes, there's a crafty person or group, a hacker, creating and spreading this malware. They're the ones trying to cause trouble. Threat vector. Here's how the trouble gets to your smartphone. Imagine receiving a seemingly innocent email. But, unbeknownst to you, it's a phishing email. It tricks you into clicking a link that downloads the fake app carrying the malware. So, in simple terms, you have your valuable smartphone, asset, a sneaky software trying to harm it, threat, a clever person or group causing the trouble, threat actor, and a tricky email leading to the trouble, threat vector. In the context of cybersecurity, typical threat actors include the following. Insiders, either deliberately, by simple human error, or by gross incompetence. Outside individuals or informal groups, either planned or opportunistic, discovering vulnerability. Formal entities that are non-political, such as business competitors and cyber criminals. Formal entities that are political, such as terrorists, nation states, and hacktivists. Intelligence or information gatherers, could be any of the above. Technology such as free-running bots and artificial intelligence, which could be part of any of the above. A vulnerability is an inherent weakness or flaw in a system or component, which, if triggered or acted upon, could cause a risk event to occur. Consider the smartphone scenario from below. Imagine you have a smartphone and it's not updated with the latest software which is leaving a gap that could be exploited. The non-updating patch is a weakness in your smartphone security this is referred as vulnerability. When identifying vulnerabilities within an organization, 
the security team assesses the likelihood of a potential vulnerability being exploited within the organization's threat environment. The likelihood of occurrence is a weighted factor derived from a subjective analysis of the probability that a specific threat or a group of threats can exploit a particular vulnerability or set of vulnerabilities. Finally, the security team will think about what could happen if a threat happens. Impact is how much harm could come from things like someone sharing information without permission, changing information without permission, destroying information without permission, or losing information or the ability to use a system. Think about the impact and the chain of reaction that can result when an event occurs by revisiting the pickpocket scenario. Consider the likelihood of falling victim to the phishing email and downloading the malware. If your cybersecurity awareness is low, the probability of this happening might be higher. Now, think about the consequences. If the malware successfully infiltrates your smartphone, it could lead to the theft of your personal information, financial data, or even unauthorized access to sensitive accounts. The impact of such an event could be significant and far-reaching. How do you identify risks? Do you walk down the street watching out for traffic and looking for puddles on the ground? Maybe you've noticed loose wires at your desk or water on the office floor. If you're already on the lookout for risks, you'll fit with other security professionals who know it's necessary to dig deeper to find possible problems. In the cyber world, spotting risks isn't a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process of finding various potential risks, understanding them, and figuring out how much they could mess up the organization. This means looking at your specific company and studying its unique situation. Security experts are aware of their organization's big plans. Key points to remember about identifying risks. Spot risks so you can talk about them clearly. Everyone in the organization, no matter their role, should be on the lookout for risks. Find risks to defend against them. As a security professional, you'll likely help assess risks at a system level, focusing on things like processes, controls, monitoring, or how to respond and recover from incidents. If you're working with a smaller organization that doesn't have any risk management plan, you might get the chance to help create one. Risk assessment is defined as the process of identifying, estimating, and prioritizing risks to an organization's operations, including its mission, functions, image and reputation, assets, individuals, other organizations and even the nation. Risk assessment should result in aligning, or associating, each identified risk resulting from the operation of an information system with the goals, objectives, assets or processes that the organization uses, which in turn aligns with or directly supports achieving the organization's goals and objectives. A common risk assessment activity identifies the risk of fire to a building. While there are many ways to mitigate that risk, the primary goal of a risk assessment is to estimate and prioritize. For example, fire alarms are the lowest cost and can alert personnel to evacuate and reduce the risk of personal injury, but they won't keep a fire from spreading or causing more damage. Sprinkler systems won't prevent a fire but can minimize the amount of damage done. However, while sprinklers in a data center limit the fire's spread, it is likely they will destroy all the systems and data on them. A gas-based system may be the best solution to protect the systems, but it might be cost prohibitive. A risk assessment can prioritize these items for management to determine the method of mitigation that best suits the assets being protected. The result of the risk assessment process is often documented as a report or presentation given to management for their use in prioritizing the identified risks. This report is provided to management for review and approval. In some cases, management may indicate a need for a more in-depth or detailed risk assessment performed by internal or external resources. Risk treatment relates to making decisions about the best actions to take regarding the identified and prioritized risk. 
the decisions made are dependent on the attitude of management toward risk and the availability, and cost, of risk mitigation. The options commonly used to respond to risk are risk avoidance, risk mitigation, risk acceptance, risk transfer, risk avoidance. Risk avoidance is the decision to attempt to eliminate the risk entirely. This could include ceasing operation for some or all of the activities of the organization that are exposed to a particular risk. Organization leadership may choose risk avoidance when the potential impact of a given risk is too high or if the likelihood of the risk being realized is simply too great. Risk mitigation. Risk mitigation is the most common type of risk management and includes taking actions to prevent or reduce the possibility of a risk event or its impact. Mitigation can involve remediation measures, or controls, such as security controls, establishing policies, procedures, and standards to minimize adverse risk. Risk cannot always be mitigated, but mitigation such as safety measures should always be in place. Risk acceptance. Risk acceptance is taking no action to reduce the likelihood of a risk occurring. Management may opt for conducting the business function that is associated with the risk without any further action on the part of the organization, either because the impact or likelihood of occurrence is negligible, or because the benefit is more than enough to offset that risk. Risk transfer. Risk transference is the practice of passing the risk to another party, who will accept the financial impact of the harm resulting from a risk being realized in exchange for payment. Typically, this is an insurance policy. Risk priorities. Once risks have been pinpointed, the next step is to prioritize and examine fundamental risks using qualitative or quantitative risk analysis. This step is crucial for identifying the root cause, narrowing down apparent risks, and focusing on core risks. Security professionals collaborate with their teams to carry out both qualitative and quantitative analyses. Qualitative risk analysis. Qualitative risk analysis involves a subjective assessment of risks based on their qualitative characteristics, such as likelihood and impact. This method often employs descriptive scales, e.g., low, medium, high, to evaluate the likelihood and impact of identified risks. It relies on expert judgment, experience, and knowledge. The outcome is a qualitative understanding of the risks, helping prioritize them based on their perceived significance. This analysis is useful for identifying key areas that require further attention and resources. Quantitative risk analysis. Quantitative risk analysis involves a numerical assessment of risks using measurable data and statistical methods. This approach quantifies risks by assigning numerical values to factors like probabilities, potential losses, and other relevant variables. It often involves mathematical models and simulations to provide a more precise assessment. The output of quantitative risk analysis includes numerical risk values, such as expected monetary loss or probability percentages. This allows for a more detailed and quantitative comparison of different risks, aiding in decision-making. A useful approach for ranking risks involves utilizing a risk matrix, where priority is determined by the intersection of the likelihood of occurrence and the impact. This matrix provides a shared language for the team to communicate with management when establishing final priorities. For instance, a situation with both low likelihood and low impact might be categorized as low priority, whereas an incident with high likelihood and high impact would be designated as high priority. Assigning priority may be linked to business priorities, the expense of mitigating a risk, or the potential for loss in case of an incident. When making decisions based on risk priorities, organizations must evaluate the likelihood and impact of the risk as well as their tolerance for different sorts of risk. A business situated near a coastal area might be more focused on the risk of hurricanes and flooding, 
whereas a company located inland in a desert region may prioritize planning for extreme heat and sandstorms. Deciding on risk tolerance often rests with executive management and the board of directors. If a company decides to neglect or embrace a risk, such as disregarding safety protocols in handling hazardous materials, it can lead to significant legal and financial liability. Understanding risk capacity, risk tolerance, and risk appetite. Risk capacity maximum risk an organization can afford to take. Risk tolerance levels are acceptable deviations from risk appetite. Risk appetite amount of risk an organization is willing to take. Let's understand with an example below. Mr. A's total saving is $1,000. He wants to invest in equities to earn some income. Being risk conscious, he decides to invest only up to $700. If the markets are good he is willing to further invest $50. Let us derive risk capacity, risks appetite and risk tolerance from above example. Risk capacity, total amount available i.e. $1000. Risk appetite his willingness to take risk i.e. $700. Risk tolerance acceptance deviation from risk appetite i.e. $50. Thanks for watching.